Hello, welcome to yet another episode where we shall be looking at the proposed revision for the grade 7 mathematics term 3. Okay, so this is a small paper out of 40 marks for one hour, and we are expected to just write within the paper and answer all the questions. Okay, so there are four possible answers given, 1.1 up to 1.5, circle the corresponding correct answer. Okay, so... What we see is that we have options that are telling us identify the variable within this expression. So the variable we know that uh, is basically the letter, okay? Any letter of the alphabet, for as long as it is within an expression, that will be called a variable. So in this case, we have P is the variable. And then two that doesn't have a letter will always be called a constant. And then five will represent what we call the coefficient, the number that appears before a letter. Then 1.2, the value of x in the equation. So we need to solve this equation. Let's move the 65 that side. Since we are adding, when the 65 crosses the equal signs, we shall be subtracting. So it's going to be x is equal to 100 minus 65. And this gives us the 35, which is option B. Then the size of HGF, HGF, so this angle here in a rectangle. We know that angles in a rectangle would always be 90 degrees, okay? So this G must be 90. Then uh, in the figure below, the triangle KJL and MNL are what? So what we can see is that this, they are having the same markings and they are having the same size, okay? So we say that these triangles are congruent. Okay, so for as long as the triangles are exactly the same, exactly identical in size and angles, then the triangles become, become congruent. Then asking us the number of symmetry within the figure. So a symmetry line is basically a line that divides the shape into two equal parts or provides a mirror image, okay? So if I'm to divide this via this line, and then by this line. Okay, someone could say we have this. We get the reflection of that. And then we have this. So how many lines are those? It's one, two, three, and then four. Okay, so we have four lines of symmetry in this case. So A becomes my answer. And then 2.1. What is the constant term in the expression? Remember, we said a constant is basically a number without a letter. So 7 becomes the constant. And then change the following statement to a number sentence. So if 12 is added to a certain number, the answer is 35. So if 12 is added, is a plus. A certain number which we don't know, we use variables. You can use X, we can use Y, we can use P, we can use K, any letter. The answer is a 35. So that is the mathematical expression. Then they want us to solve by inspection. So in our small grades, we used to have seven times a box must give us a 56. So which number do we multiply by seven to give us a 56? Meaning that the number needs to be eight. So that is by inspection. You can try by checking. If you get 56 divided by seven, we shall end up with eight. So any number that is next to a letter, it simply means a multiplication. Then 2.4, calculate the value of this if x is 1 over 3. So where there is x, we're going to replace it with a 1 over 3. So this is going to be 3 times 1 over 3 minus 2. So 3 times a third is just 1 minus 2 we must get a negative one as our answer. Okay, then uh, question number three, they want us to define what a line segment is. So a line segment is basically a line with a start or a starting point and an end point. In other words, for as long as it starts from somewhere, maybe that is A and then this is B. That's known as a line segment. 
Then 3.2, write down the type of each of the following triangles in the spaces. So what type of triangle is this? Where two sides are equal. So this is known as an isosceles triangle. This triangle with a 90 degree will be known as a right angled triangle. Okay, so we say this is isosceles triangle. And then a triangle with all the three sides equal, we call it equilateral triangle. Okay, so that is 3.2. Then 3.3, .3, study the diagram below and answer the question that follow, questions that follow, okay? Identify the perpendicular lines. So we know that perpendicular lines simply means that those lines are forming a 90 degree. They are meeting at 90 degrees. So the symbol for 90 degrees is basically that small square box, meaning that we have it here. So this line CD and then the line CE. So we're going to say that CD and CE. Okay. The line CE can also be extended up to A and you can say AE. There's no problem. Then identify the parallel lines. So we know that parallel lines are basically lines that never meet and we normally use arrows to represent those lines. Okay, it could be a single arrow or it also could be a double arrow, even a triple arrow. So those lines are this line AE, the all of this. So AE and this line BF. Okay, then what size? What is the size of angle ACD? Now, size of angle ACD, we are not measuring, okay? Are we measuring? Yeah, we have to measure. The size of ACD, this is ACD. So if this is a 90, we know that this must also be a 90, okay? Because the two will give us angles on a line that must add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to say that that is 90 degrees. And then calculate the size of CED. CED, they want us to find this angle within this particular triangle. Okay, so one thing we need to know about angles in a triangle is that they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so if I call this my X, okay, so X plus 55 plus the 90, we must get 180 degrees. The reason, those are interior angles of a triangle. Okay, so we know that uh, 55 plus 90 is gonna be just 145, is equal to 180. And then we need to subtract, meaning that your x is gonna be 180 minus 145, which gives us just a 35 degree. Okay, so that is 3.3.4. Then 3.4, always the center of the circle, they want us to name the parts. So now we know that um, 3.4.3, I'll start from there. That's known as a chord. 3.4.2, that's a radius. And then the area that is shaded here will be known as a segment. Is that true? Yes. But some people would always call it a sector also, but I'm taking segment. Then 3.5, they're telling us to start a figure below and answer the questions that follow. So what shape is this? If this marking is the same as that, this is the same as that, meaning that this is a kite. And we know that a kite has two sides that are equal. So what type of quadrilateral is this? It's a kite. Then what is the length of AB? So AB is the same as this, meaning that it is a 30 centimeter. Then what is the length of CD? CD is going to be 15 centimeters. All right, then question four, describe the translation, which changed the position from A to B. So they told us that uh, it's a translation, okay? So we just need to find out how many units we used. So we can start from this corner, okay? Just use one corner. You don't need all the corners, just one. So meaning that we're gonna move one, two, three, and four for us to get to this cone of interest. Meaning that we are moving four units 
horizontally. Okay. And then downwards, how many blocks are we moving? It's one, two, three. Okay, so it's three units down. So how do we describe this? So we're saying that A moved four units, or you can say four blocks to the right, and then three blocks Okay, three units or three blocks down. Okay, so that is 4.1. Then 4.2, they want us on the same grid to reflect this line. So a reflection, all we need to remember is that our distance needs to be the same, okay? So we have two blocks from the mirror line or the line of reflection, which means we must also have two blocks this side. Then we draw that line. And then follow two blocks that side, use your ruler, and then two blocks this side. There we go. Okay, and then cover this up. So we have this as our reflection. Okay, then on the same grid, they want us to enlarge this triangle using a scale factor of two. So when you're enlarging, you just make something bigger. Okay, so if we have how many blocks are these? There are three blocks. One, two, three, four. We have four blocks. And then one, two, three. I don't know what's happening there, but let me just focus on these two. So I'm going to multiply by two, multiply by two. So I need to have six blocks. So if I start from here, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six up to here. And then I can just throw this with my ruler. Okay, and then this side I'm going to have eight. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then extend that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I can just connect this. All right, so that becomes the enlarged triangle. And that brings us to the end of this paper. I wish you guys all the best in your preparation and let's meet again when we see each other. Bye-bye.